please join me in the call to worship. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. Because every enemy sounds the foe and the adventure. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him? Son of man that you care for him. He, you made him a little lower than the heavenly beings. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. All flocks and herds, and the beasts of the fields, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. prayer. O Heavenly Father, who has filled the world with beauty, open our eyes to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness. For the sake of him through whom all things are made, our Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
to open all the side windows nice and wide. Let's get those fans cranked up. And would you greet one another as you're seated this morning? folks, and it's good to be here today. Happy Father's Day, men um, and boys who will hopefully someday be fathers yourselves. Uh, it is nice to have everybody here today, men and women, boys and girls. Uh, welcome to worship this morning. Last week, we had a very lively service as our children led us in Children's Sunday. We are now sort of transitioning into summer. Um, where everything will be a little lighter around here. Um, many thanks, and how about a hand for our choir? I mean, everything we do is all for the glory of God, of course, but we really appreciate our choir and the beautiful music that you add to our service, so thank you very much. And Chuck, thank you for all you do, picking out great songs, and um, we appreciate that. And Peter as well, thank you. Though Peter's not going anywhere. be playing for us a good part of the summer. You put vacation in there somewhere, Peter. We had to talk about that. Um, thank you. We love the music. And that said, uh, with the choir taking the summer off, uh, we have lots of slots for you to share your gifts of music. Um, we would love to hear you play an instrument. Um, pick a hymn and play it. Piano, violin, saxophone, organ, solo, singing. Uh, we would love to hear you share your music. Someone in here might play the hammered dulcimer. Uh, maybe they could bring that in. Not today, though. Please note the things that are going on uh, in your yellow colored bulletin. And to kick us off with our announcements this morning, um, Debbie Nickerson, <clears throat> who is now on our Christian community ministry team, would like to say a few words about next Sunday, which is Trout Brook. Yes, please join us for our annual Worship in the Woods next Sunday out of Trout Brook. We gather for worship at 1030, but the coffee pot is on early, so arrive early if you'd like and sit and chat and have a cup of coffee and such. Um, this year we're going to make sure that we've got some parking places down by that shelter area, so let us know if you need a handicapped parking place that you need to park down there. We'll make sure we save a space for you. We're also encouraging people to drive all the way into the shelter, drop off passengers, drop off your food if you want, and then go back out if possible and park in the main parking lot, which is beyond the gate. It's a little bit of a walk down the road, so please, please, please let us know if you need um, to get a parking place right up next to the shelter. What we're doing a little bit differently this year is we are not going to be doing any cooking. It's going to be a totally potluck lunch. So we have a sign-up sheet downstairs outside the vestry uh, where you see a whole bunch of pictures from various events that we've had over the years. So please sign up. Let us know what you're bringing. We will provide all the plates and serving ware and, and beverages and that kind of thing. Um, also bring a favorite game. It lasts until about 3 in the afternoon. We already have badminton coming, a game called Cornhole, and another one called Coop, which I understand are both homemade games that are used out on the lawn. People bring board games, cards, whatever you'd like to do, um, but it's a great time to fellowship with one another. If you're able to help us with a little bit of setup or clean up afterwards, that would be awesome too. So contact um, anybody from the Christian Community Ministry team. Lori Nyman is our chairman. but. Uh, Joyce Johnson is on the team, Carol Martin, Erica Bemis is downstairs, and myself. So we look forward to seeing you next uh, Sunday. Thank you, Debbie. And by shelter sheet, I mean the pavilion, which you see up here, you can drive right down through. There's not enough room for everyone to park there, but if walking is a problem, you get first priority. Nancy, could you do me a favor? Can you crank these fans up yeah. all the way? Um, let's see, what else do we have? A pastor's book club. So I mentioned this last week, but I still see a lot of books there. This summer, we're reading biographies. So 
for the little, little ones, um, there's biographies. In fact, someone last week grabbed like five of them and said, I don't want my, this was a, a elementary aged girl who said, I don't want my toddler aged brother to miss out on the ice cream party. I'll be reading these to him. So we have these little books. They're, they're great. You can read them to your little ones. Uh, great biographies of Christian men and women. Uh, for our school age kids, we have these two books, uh, 10 Boys Who Changed the World, 10 Girls Who Changed the World. If you're a boy, you don't have to read the boy book. You may be more interested to say, do girls do anything great? You might want to read the girls one. Uh, same thing with the girls. You might want to read the boys. You can pick whatever one interests you, or both. Um, and same thing for um, the men. In fact, uh, the one person I saw with him under his arm last week was Cole Hamill, who loves to read. I said, you picked them both up, Cole. I said, yep, I'm going to read them both. So here's for the adults. Um, seven men, seven women. Now in the fall, we will have ice cream and discussions for the kids on September 16th. Uh, we'll talk about which book you like the best, uh, which character you like the best, and same thing for the adults. September 19th will be sort of the beginning of our Wednesday Bible study, so the 9.30 a.m. group uh, and the 6.30 p.m. group will start with a book discussion. So take advantage of that. It's so good. There's so much stuff, isn't there, that goes into your mind. I know you're like really stressed out because you have so much Facebook to read and there's just so many good shows on Netflix, but make a little time for things like this. It's good for your mind, good for your heart, good for your family. All right, I think that's it for announcements. Please note the other things. Holden Days, we've highlighted. Please sign up. We need summer Sunday school teachers. Uh, please sign up for that. Uh, notice the other things that are going on. Anything I missed? All right, so today we're sort of in between um, regular Sunday school and summer Sunday school. So for the kids, you know, and you can parent, you can be a little gray with this, um, but uh, first grade, second grade, and up can stay in worship service. Uh, the littler kids can go out with Mrs. Peterson um, for fellowship time because no regular Sunday school today. You're going to stay with me, Samantha, huh? Bye, kids. Have fun. We're going to have a blast up here. Sorry you can't be with us. All right, we've been busy the last month, and we haven't had a lot of time for uh, joys and concerns, so let's take a little bit of time this morning. And let me mention a few. Uh, you can take advantage of the um, box on the back of your bulletin uh, if you'd like to write some down, uh, but let me mention a few. Um, first of all, as I mentioned, who plays the hammer dulcimer? Dave Nyman, who would have been here today, but Dave's sick. Dave doesn't seem like he gets sick very often at all, but he has a fever. So let's keep Dave uh, in our prayers this morning and Lori's home taking care of him. Um, Phyllis George, is Phyllis here? Phyllis, I heard your sister passed away. Our prayers are with you on that as well. Um, and last week I announced it, but it kind of, I think it lost in, in all the energy of last week, but uh, Dorothea Van Feckman did pass away and we had a wonderful memorial service for her a week ago yesterday. Um, but our prayers are with the Van Feckman family and Dick. Um, who uh, has to adjust with, to life without his bride of 70 plus years. Um, so keep the Van Feckmans in your prayers. Uh, Kelly Maxwell's grandson, Benjamin, he's two years old. Uh, he may have melanoma. Uh, so he's been in for some testing and she asks for our prayers for uh, Benjamin. The Burroughs family, who is often with us, as you know, uh, both Brian and Wendy lost their fathers and I believe the Burroughs are down in Alabama right now um, uh, laying Wendy's dad to his final resting place. Of course, Wendy was grief-filled as it is. She's comforted knowing that her dad knew the Lord and uh, that he is in a better place as much as we'll miss him here. Um, Jennifer, oh, come on. It's going to make for a rough sermon, guys. Joanne Peterson uh, asked her prayers for... Uh, Mateus, who's a family friend, he's still struggling with cancer um, on this day. A couple more, and then I'll let you guys go. We've been backlogged for a while. Um, our Houston mission trip, the kids leave next Sunday morning at 4 a.m. Um, so let's keep our... Brian, you're excited, huh? Yeah. So we commissioned them last week, and we're sending them off. So uh, let's uh, be praying for them. 
Um, let's also uh, keep uh, the family in our prayers as uh, Pete's mom um, isn't well. And uh, let's keep her in our prayers. And finally on my list, uh, Dr. Ken Johnson, um, who is Pete and Pauline Johnson's son. Um, he has cancer and he is undergoing treatment um, in the next couple of weeks and it's stem cell treatment. And so tomorrow they start the harvesting of the stem cells and he begins treatment in July. So let's keep um, Ken in our prayers as well. And one more. Mallory, we didn't get to say goodbye to you last week. Um, see, that's just like, see ya. <laughs> but Mallory and John, um, they're out of here in the next couple of weeks, and Caleb too, and the rest of the family. So thanks for being a part of us. Our prayers and blessings go with you. And I see you're wearing um, Eagles green. That's not lost on me. <laughs> what else do we have for joys and concerns this morning? Allison? They were great. But many of you prayed with me over the way that you gave Joseph. She was baptized that summer. Oh, how wonderful. So thank you for all your prayers. And it's baby Josie, right? And uh, we pray for her, fighting for her life, and now she's baptized. And let's uh, keep her in our prayers. Thank you. <laughs> what else this morning? Barb? Wonderful. Um, and she and so Julie, who's cancer free, and Brenda, who's beginning her battle with breast cancer. <coughs> I saw their hands. Uh, oh, don't don't point to people because I think you're uh, raising your hand. I, I won't forget the choir. Yes, Andy. Joyce, um, my wife and I just celebrated our 15th wedding anniversary. Wonderful. But Andy, she's not here today. What happened? She's in the nursery. Okay. Oh! Shout <laughs> out. Kelly, thank you. Um, also, um, to all the fathers, fathers that were friends over the years here in the church, just have a father's Yeah, amen. Uh, and to all the fathers that. Andy has befriended him and befriended him. Happy Father's Day. Kim? Jim Young, any update? I don't have an update on Jim. He was supposed to come home, but I don't know if he did, so I don't know. Um, but continue to pray for Jim Young as he recovers from his stroke. I didn't get any update this past week. Megan? Um. Do you remember his name? Wilner. Wilner? And he's in his last days, is that what I heard you say? Yeah. So for Wilner, uh, one of the people Megan worked with in Haiti, <coughs> who's in his last days, he's in critical condition right now. Don? 28-year-old nephew, Kevin, who's uh, struggling with addiction. For Kevin, who's struggling with addiction? Laura? Um, for all those grads that now need to find the uh, careers, career employment. For grads who need to find employment. Amen. Phyllis? lost her, her brother. So uh, not only praying for Phyllis and her loss of her sister, but one of her close friends shortly thereafter lost her brother, Dolly. Carol.
So for those who are grieving the loss of their father. Yeah. Yeah, myself too, a lot of us. And, and by the way, when I think of that too, it never it's not to diminish, but just to balance and bring hope. What a wonderful thing. There, there's a lot of people whose father passes away and it's really not that big of a deal because they're not that close and it wasn't that involved. And what a wonderful tribute to your dad if you miss him because he was that special. That's wonderful. Anybody else? Catherine. Tell me his name again. Well, nephews. Oh, nephews. Will they be at the pig roast? <laughs> All right, this is good. Let's bring these requests and ourselves before our God in prayer. Dear Lord, at the heart of who we are as a people, we are a community who has been called to be the body of Christ in this place at this time. We're called into relationship with you and into relationship with one another. And thankfully, Lord, it's a relationship of love, of support, and of kindness. Beginning from that which flows from your throne, Lord, the grace, the love, the faithfulness, the caring. And Lord, as it flows into us and through us, the outpouring of love and support and togetherness, of forgiveness, of bearing with, that we can give to one another. And so Lord, as a community of faith, as the body of Christ, we come before you this morning. And we bring to you these people and these things that are on our hearts. First and foremost, Lord, we bring ourselves. Continue to strengthen the bonds in this church community. Continue to strengthen our bonds of love for one another and our love for the world around us, Lord. That as you said, that as we love one another, the world will know that we are truly your disciples. Lord, we are so imperfect in our love and we are often selfish and lazy. Forgive us for that, Lord. And help us to grow in love, commitment, sacrifice for each other and for one another, and all for your glory. To this end, on this day, amongst many other things, we commit ourselves to you. Hear the prayers of your people. Lord, we bring before you those who have been mentioned. We pray for Ken Johnson as he begins his stem cell cancer treatment, Lord. We lift our prayers along with all those who are praying for him. We pray, Lord, that he would um, be strong in body and mind and spirit. Pray that he would uh, be healed and that he would be one who could proclaim at some point not too long down the road that he too is cancer free. So, Lord, bless him and his body and this process. We lift to you all those in like manner who have asked for prayers for cancer this morning. Uh, for Brenda, for Julie, who now can say that she is cancer-free. We pray for uh, little Benjamin, who may have melanoma. Watch over him, Lord, uh, and his body. We pray for Dave, who is home with a fever. Help him to uh, get better. We pray for uh, Phyllis and the loss of her sister. We pray for the Van Fechtman family and the loss of Dorothy. We pray for the Burroughs family and the loss of both Brian and Wendy's father and the grief that comes in there. We pray for the Martin family and for all of those, Lord, who have lost cherished husbands and fathers. And on this Father's Day, Lord, we remember the good that was in our fathers. None of them were perfect, Lord. Thank you for the love and the good things that have been passed on to us from them. And we honor them, and we give you thanks for them, Lord. We pray for Catherine's nephews, and we rejoice in that. We pray for Dolly as she mourns the loss of her brother. We pray for our grads, Lord, and we rejoice in their success, and pray that you would help them to find employment and to truly 
enter into the adult world of responsibility and independent living and taking care of yourself. We pray for Josie and rejoice that she has made progress and been protected and um, is doing so much better in her little life. Bless her in her baptism from last week. Be with Matthias and the cancer that he wrestles with. And Lord, uh, we pray for Pete and uh, his mom and ask you to be with her um, and the struggles that she is going through. We pray for Pete and the entire crew that will be going to Houston next week. We ask you to bless the 13 teens and the three adults who will be going to help rebuild after the destructive hurricane and floods of last year. Lord, hear our prayers this day. We are weak, but you are strong. We know little. We get things wrong. We misinterpret. We have desires that aren't in line with you. But Lord, you are good and you are patient. And like a loving father who embraces and corrects and steers in the right direction, receive our prayers, Lord, and embrace us. Comfort us where we're afraid and scared and crying out to you. And Lord, steer us in the right direction. Teach us and train us. Help us to be strong in this world in the midst of all of its trials and tribulations and its struggles. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that we may know that peace that surpasses all understanding. That no matter what's going on, we simply may know that you are with us and it's okay. Lord, be with all of us today and the things that have been mentioned and the other things that are on our hearts. And hear these prayers that we bring before you now in this brief moment of silent prayer. Lord, hear these prayers of your people. And Lord, on this Father's Day, we lift before you our men. We thank you that you created both men and women in your image, Lord, and for a purpose. We thank you that you created men and women for one another, and in that union comes children and fatherhood. And so, Lord, we ask your blessing to be upon the men and upon our fathers, Lord. Forgive us as a country for all of the sins of men, for all of the ways that we have not lived up to the calling that you've given us, to the way of life, to be like Christ. And Lord, help us to be more like Christ, to be better husbands, to be better fathers, to be better citizens, to be better followers of Christ to bring you glory, to bless the world, to bless our families, to bless our children. Be with our fathers, Lord. Be with our men, as we will focus on later in this service. We pray in Christ's name. And now, Lord, hear all of our prayers as we pray in the way you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs>
again thank you, choir. Our first reading this morning comes from Galatians. I'm sorry, Ephesians. <laughs> the book right after Galatians. Chapter 5, verse is 24 through chapter 6, verse 4. Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. And fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from Galatians 5, 22 through 23, and can be found on page 1812 in your Bible. But the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Here ends the second reading. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8a, and can be found on page 1785 in your pew Bible. Love is patient and love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Here ends our third reading. So I want to talk to you today about being a dad. But I feel a little, well, this is how I was thinking when I started. I feel a little under or unqualified. I think, because after all, I mean, what do I really know about being a dad? I mean, I've raised two kids. I could give a few pointers. I could still learn a whole lot from a lot of you. Uh, even moms and women have lots of good pointers on how to be a better dad. But you know what, then I realized, who would I go to to find this wisdom? I mean, there's always best-selling books. I used to try to make it my goal to read one book on marriage or one book on parenting or fathering every other year while my kids were growing up um, to glean some wisdom. I thought, which book would, who would be the expert? And then I realized my role and my calling as pastor was to bring you and point to you the one who knows best about what it means to be the father. 
And that is the engineer, the designer, the creator of men. He knows what it means to be a father. We have a crisis of fatherhood in our country. And not only a crisis of fatherhood, we have a crisis of male identity in our country. Now that is not to disparage all the other crises and problems we have in our country. They're there too. In fact, if you think about it, if men were acting like real men the way God created them to be, we would not have a Me Too movement, would we? Because men wouldn't act like that. And a lot of the social ills and problems we have would actually be lessened if they were there at all, if men acted like real men and real fathers and real husbands. So in order for me to talk about being a dad, I really need to begin with what it means to be a man. And to talk to you about it, what it means to be a man, we need to go to scripture. <coughs> Now, we could write volumes, and there are volumes written, of great advice of how to be a man, of how to be a dad. But let's look at just a few things today that I think will be helpful. This is important not just to the men here or the fathers. This is important to all of us. Because whether you like men or don't like men, they're half the world's population. And how they behave or don't behave affects everybody, men and women, young and old, married, single, whoever you are. So the first thing I submit to you, I'm just going to give you five things, that a man needs to do to be a man, and ultimately we're leading to being a father, is a man needs to walk with God. Men, I mean this is true for everyone, you need to walk with God. You were created by God for a purpose, for a meaningful and fulfilling life. And God has given you the ability to make decisions. And you can choose to go your own way and to walk this way or that way. Or you can choose to walk with God and to fulfill the purpose and the plan and the destiny for which he has created you. That is so foundational it can't be overemphasized. There's all kinds of things you can do out there, men. But the first and most important thing is to know your God. To know the one who created you. To have a relationship with him. To talk to him. To walk with him. To listen to his word. To grow and to learn as a Christian man. And what does that include? Growing in godly character. Now, this is a lifetime. You will need multiple sermons and church and all this kind of stuff. And you'll probably need a few good people around you. One, one might very well be your wife to help you become a more godly man. But let's talk a little bit about godly character. And those two passages that Megan read for us this morning are the first things that come to mind. When we think of men, this is what we think of, right? Men are loving. Men are joyful. Men are peaceful. Men are patient. <laughs> men are kind, men are good, men are faithful, men are gentle, men exercise self-control. Right? You kind of smile. I kind of smile at that too. I'm thinking, yeah, that's not exactly a list that I would characterize men. And yet, this is the mark of the character of a true man. Because this is the fruit of the Spirit of Jesus Christ living in the believer. Think of what a different place our world would be if men, if men were loving. If men, instead of being grumpy and irritable, were joyful, gentle, kind, good, patient instead of quick to fly off the handle, peace-loving instead of always wanting to fight and start a war, self-controlled. Self-control would probably end most of the Me Too movement if we saw more of that. These kind of characteristics are not weak, they're strong. A weak man can be angry. 
A strong man can be gentle and kind. Sometimes we think that means weakness. It takes strength when, especially if you are agitated, to be remain gentle and kind. And this is what God wants for us. How about this, love? What if some of these characteristics were what men were like? Love is patient, it's kind. We already talked about those. It doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, it isn't proud. Oh, the pride and vanity of men, myself included. All the evil, all the error. In fact, I, I just keep picking on the Me Too thing because it's me, but think of how much pride and ego and arrogance is involved in that whole movement and its abuse of women. It doesn't dishonor others. There we go again. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. Think about that not self-seeking for a moment. How much of our culture how much of us is driven by seeking our own power, our own position, our own wealth. Jesus showed us a different way, didn't he? Do you know how much power Jesus had? Good grief. Unlimited power at his hands. And what did he choose to do? He chose to serve. He chose to lay his life down for others. And it's his spirit of love that lives in us. Not self-seeking, not easily angered keeps no record of wrongs, doesn't delight in evil, rejoices with the truth, always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. This is God's love. And those fruit of the Spirit we just read, those are the fruit of God's Spirit and the fruit of Jesus in us. By the way, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's the same thing. It's three in one. It's God in us. All of these things are God in us. And it's the fruit that he bears and he wants to see it more in us. So men, the first thing we need to do is to walk with God. To repent of all these ways that we've fallen short. And to ask Christ to fill us and forgive us and continue his transforming work of making us into the men he wants us to be. Walk with God. Grow in godly character. Love your wife. As much as we mess around with biology and social constructs these days, it's just one thing that's true. You can't be a father without a mother, and you can't be a mother without a father. We play with it a little bit, but we have not been able to beat the biology yet. So if we want to get down to that level of being a good father, it begins with loving the mother of your children. Love your wife, right? That's what Paul reminded the church in Ephesians. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Do you see now some practical application of the fruit we were just talking about? What is laying down your life for your wife look like? It's putting her needs above your own. It's sacrificing your own pride and your own ego. It's holding off on your reactions and your anger and whatever else it may be. And it's putting her first. In the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies, he who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but they feed and care for it, just as Christ does the church. Of course, Paul's making a bigger point here, but verse 31, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and become united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. For those of you who are married, that bond is so important. And men, you need to take it seriously. And that woman that God has put you with is not simply to be an irritant to you. But it's someone who you are to love and to cherish and to care for and to lift up on a pedestal, if I can still use that kind of language. Each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Now, there's an interesting commitment, right? We, we often get away from that. I, I cut out, it's not about women today, it's about men. So I cut out all that submit to your husbands and all that kind of stuff. But can I tell you something, men, regardless of how you feel about this? It's the rare godly man who has those characteristics we were talking about 
whom a wife doesn't absolutely enjoy. It's the ungodly man who says, I'm the head of the household, make me a sandwich, get me a beer, do what I want, you know, I'm going to sit around. Yeah, that's irritating. And, and, and men abuse that authority and have for years, right? But the godly man who says, honey, do you mind if I take charge and leadership of the children today while you go out and enjoy some time off? Do you mind if I take charge of the house and clean it up and paint it and fix some stuff? Do you mind if I take charge of our social life and, and set up for us some dates so we can go out and have fun? It's the rare woman who's going to say no to that, guys. This is other-centered, putting your wife first, putting your family first kind of leadership. And you will earn the respect of your wife. Walk with God, grow in godly character, love your wife, love your kids. The last verse in the Old Testament says this, the prophet Elijah will come and that's supposedly John the Baptist as he gets ready for Christ and his preaching will do this, he will turn the hearts of fathers, ooh I almost fell there, that would be great, if that's videotaped we could get money. He will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and children to their fathers. Part of this preparing the way for the Lord is a restoration of the hearts of fathers being for their children. Jesus loved children. Remember this passage, right? The people were bringing children to Jesus and the disciples said, he doesn't have time. He's a busy, important man. And Jesus said, I've got time. Bring him on. And he blessed the children. But notice this too at the very end. When he placed your hands on them, he went on. He did have stuff to do. Fathers, there's a balance. Make time for your kids, though. They're important. Love them. Speaking of balance, I have my daughter Katie, who's in college now, but when she was a little girl, I work at home a lot, and a lot of you have that um, blessing in today's culture. She used to come into my office when she was little, and she'd be like, Dad, will you come out and play? Will you do this? I'm like, Katie, I can't. I've got to work. And she'd pull out that horrible dad guilt card that would say, that's all you do. Work, work, work. Ooh. But there is a balance, right? If, if you work at home, dads, what a blessing. I would tell her, I'd be like, dad, Katie, you realize there's some dads here who leave at six in the morning and get home at six at night? They're not even around for their kids to be able to say that to. Now, I know that some of you, you can make that work too, but if you work at home, what a blessing. And you can take a few minutes to have lunch and play with your kids and go back to work. What a wonderful thing. Make time for your kids. And can I be honest with you, for all the things that are wrong with our culture, this is one that actually we're doing pretty well on. In fact, I worry just the opposite sometimes. We have made children such a priority that parents are running around like slaves to children, like they're a taxi service or they're entertainment coordinators. We're trying to make up for the sins of the past where children were seen and not heard and sometimes not even noticed. Um, and we're going the opposite direction. And if it bugs you that I just said that because you're thinking, no, no, we need to do more for our kids, that's because that's exactly where our culture's at. We Kids are so elevated in our culture, and it's a good thing. But make time for your kids. Love your kids. Teach and train them. It's funny, I kept going back and forth. It fit in better to say teach and train them. I, I wanted to say, well, I don't mean teach and train your wife. Uh, but good luck with that. Um, but teach and train your children. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. First commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, don't exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in training and instruction of the Lord. So there's a don't and there's a do, dads. Don't exasperate your children. That's a great word. That's like the one true command to fathers in the Bible. Everything else about kind of being a man and being a man of God and walking with Christ, those are probably the greater things. But here's what I think is the one and only like direct command to fathers. Don't exasperate your children. Now, I don't know what that exactly means. I mean, I can be a nudge, and, and I love to like pick. Sometimes my wife will say, John, stop being a nudge. You know, be someone your children can respect because you're goofing around too much. I get that. But exasperate. I see a lot of that as anger, right? Sometimes fathers 
because they still tend to be kind of the disciplinarian sometimes, can come down so hard on their kids um, that it's just exasperating. And their kids, there's no grace, there's no wiggle room, it's overbearing, it's too much. Maybe some of you had a parent like that. But we're not to frustrate our kids, that's what it means. Don't frustrate them. I mean, you need to train them, you need to discipline them, but try to be reasonable so they don't grow discouraged, so they don't lose heart, so that they can grow in the love and the fear of the Lord. Don't exasperate your children. Bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Fathers, here's our greatest calling for our kids. is to teach them about the Lord. We talked about this last week on Children's Sunday. You can go back and listen to some of those pointers. But you know, pray for your kids. Pray with your kids. Talk to them about Jesus and about the faith. And in formal ways, sometimes a family devotional, but I think those informal ways that you capitalize on are the best. And you know how you capitalize on informal ways? Is when you're walking with Christ. When you're walking with Christ, when you've been praying and spending time with Him, you're kind of in the zone. And when your kids act to ask a question, you're more likely to answer it in a godly kind of way. Train your children. Instruct them. Raise them in the Lord. And finally, do all of this with humility and grace. These are idealistic things, aren't they? Is there any one of us who fully does this or can fully do this? Remember these words of Paul. For all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. And we're all justified freely by the grace God gives us in Christ. Is there a man among us who is perfectly loving and joyful and peaceful and patient and kind and all of these things? There's not. Is there a man who's never self-centered or never proud? There's not. But God's grace is sufficient for us. And it's freeing, isn't it? And, and, and families, by the way, right? Women and men. Some of you are like, I, I can't love my wife because we've been divorced for years. We live in a sinful and broken world. Relationships are broken. Even some marriages are broken that still haven't completely broken apart yet. Some relationships between parents and kids are broken. There's damage. There's hurt. There's sin. It all enters in. We've all sinned, so we need to be humble. And we need to live under grace. And perhaps the first place a grace needs to be applied is to yourself. As you walk with God, receive His grace. You're not a perfect parent. You're not a perfect father. You've made mistakes. Ask for forgiveness. Try to start from today and move forward. You've been an angry curmudgeon around the house. Repent of that and say, I'm sorry, but the past is forgiven and let's move on. There may be some healing that needs to be done, but let's work on patience and kindness instead. The marriage may be over. It may be hard to love the mother of your children, fathers. But you can still be kind. And you can still, even in that brokenness, demonstrate kindness to that person in front of your children and model Christ's grace and forgiveness humbly in a broken world. I mean, I could apply that a million ways around, but hopefully you get the idea. Humility and grace seasons, seeps in, permeates everything. It sets us free from the miserable failures that we are in a lot of this stuff. And it sets us free to receive Christ more fully and to be the person and people and the fathers that he wants us to be. So being a dad requires being a man. Walk with God. Grow in godly character. Love your wife. It's the greatest gift you can give your children. Love your children. Turn your hearts towards them. Teach them. Train them. And walk humbly. And walk in grace. Can we pray? Dear Lord, I thank you that I am a man. I thank you that I am a father. I thank you for these gifts and the responsibilities you've given me, for the way you've created me. I thank you for those who share maleness and fatherhood with me. Father, we are all broken, and we all fall short of your glory. And we've sinned and we've messed up. There are things we've done that we regret. 
things we haven't done because we've been busy doing other things that we regret. So Lord, may your mercy and your grace be on all of us. May we walk humbly in you. May we love our wives, may we love our children. We teach and train them in the ways that you've taught us. We give you thanks, we give you praise. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We have one obligation to proclaim the gospel. We are entrusted with a commission, so we give freely of our time and abilities where we are, and we send and support the witness of others where we cannot go. Let us give, continue to give generously. Dear God, thank you for your great gifts to us. Receive now these, our humble offerings that we present to you. Use them to strengthen the ministry of your church in this place, to help those in need and to spread the gospel across the streets and to the ends of the earth until you come again in all your glory. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Can you tell these two are related? <laughs> I've changed the uh, hymn, closing hymn this morning. Um, it is, is it 670? 671. The words will actually be on the screen in front of you. Um, you know this one, those of you who have been around church for a while. Um, Rise up, O men of God. This seemed appropriate at the end of the hymn. It's funny, they've, they've taken it out of the hymnals a lot of ways because... Back in the day, everyone knew that men meant all people, but now it's men and women. We've changed language. But this is a great anthem and prayer 
for our men. So if you're a man, sing this out. If you're a woman, let this be your prayer and your hope. And think of your mind, the men in your life, your husband, your kids, your grandkids, your parents. We need our men to rise up and to be the men that God has called them to be. So we will conclude our service with this familiar hymn. Father's Day to worship our Heavenly Father, to hear from His Word, to sing His praises. Now as you leave this place, may the Holy Spirit fill all of you, men and women, boys and girls. May you go forth and bear the good fruit that He's called us all to bear, individually, in our marriages, in our families, in our country, and in our world. Go bring Him glory. Go in peace. Go in joy. Go serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you.